Yo, 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 what the deal? It's your boy X dot E dot L dot O. Welcome back to the channel, man. Thank you. Yes, you. Thank you for coming back. But if you are new here, please do me a favor and like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. So I'll let you know when I drop another video. All right. So today what I want to do is actually go over what they call vocal sync. It's a cool way to actually sync vocals that you have that are kind of like off in certain areas and sections. And Cakewalk has one built in. The issue is, is that it gives some artifacts at times. And I wish, I wish, I wish they actually get it fixed. But I want to show you how to actually use it just in case they actually do get it fixed. Uh, so Cakewalk, if you're watching and you're listening, please fix the vocal sync. We would love to use it. It's a great tool. Uh, it's something that a lot of other dogs don't have or even think about. So that could be, uh, something definitely to bring up inside of the sonar cakewalk that should be coming up or in the cakewalk next, either one, it will work fine for me, but let's get into the video, show you how to do it. Let's go. All right. So here we are in cakewalk and this is my dark theme. If you're interested in this theme or my light theme, I usually have a link below in the description where you can download these themes for free while they still last and Cakewalk is my band lab is still uh, operational. So um, I do have a track here um, that I made a beat that I made. Um, I did turn down the gain because I'm going to try to just record something in really quick. It's not going to be anything spectacular, just something to record in. Um, and here's what the beat sounds like right now. Just a little preview of what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do probably that first like eight bars just to add something on there just so we can actually test out the vocal sync. Usually in order to actually record vocals in here, you'll just add a track. Um, this is the way I usually like to do it. I'll just add or insert a track and I'll make sure that I am going to the correct one. I have my insert one and I can hit on record and you'll see now that I have my input on here. All right, and it's not coming out through the DAW, it's actually still coming out through the mic so you guys can hear it, so it should be fine. So, let's go. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah. One, two. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah. One, two. All right, so let's see if we can actually uh, do that again. So I usually, my method, uh, when I'm actually doing recording, I just usually drag this one down and that way I'll have uh, the same settings for my track and I don't have to worry about it. Um, I can just kind of worry about everything else kind of later on. All right, so let's start our second part. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, uh, yeah, one, two, one, two, one, two, uh, yeah, one, two. All right, so we have our second part there, and this is do one more just for good measure, and you guys can kind of see how the vocal alignment works. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah. One, two. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah. One, two. All right, so now we have three of them recorded. And now um, I can even turn this one off. So let's try to take a look, a closer look at it. I'm going to hit D on the keyboard to get rid of the docking station, right? And I'm going to hit these little drop down arrows so I can bring out the tracks so you can kind of see them a little bit better. All right. Uh, I'm going to expand them as well. So you guys can see what was actually recorded. And if, if you ever wanted to make sure 
that uh, you want, you can see your waveform. You can go here in this little section and you see how it has like a little wave. If you pull up on this, it'll make the waveform bigger, right? It's not actually increasing the volume or anything. It's just making the waveform look bigger on the screen so you can actually see what's going on. All right. So there's two ways to actually start this. Uh, one way would be just to right click on whatever uh, track you have. So if I right click on here, it'll give me an option up here that says region effects. And here is the vocal sync. So I can hit create region effect here, or you can go up here to the top and hit vocal sync on this region effects right here and go to vocal sync and then go to create region effects. So there's two ways to kind of do it, right? So I'm gonna leave the first one as the main one. So I'm just gonna copy over these two. I'm gonna highlight these two and I'm just gonna make the effect region, right? So now it's gonna process and now these are now region effects. So in order for this to work or get aligned, you need to go down here to the end. You'll see like this little effect right here. If you click on that, it gives you an option that says uh, to remove the effect or to open the editor. And this little thing here is the editor. Let me try to move it, uh, I guess, out of the way, but in the way at the same time. All right, and I'm gonna zoom in on the tracks just so that you'll be able to see it a little bit better, All right? All right, so in order to get this started, you wanna select your guide. So uh, it'll tell you the track. So track two, as you can see, this is track two. There's nothing on there. So track four will be our lead. So I'm gonna click on track four. And that will be our guide, right? So now it's saying, it's showing me that some of the things are actually off on here. And it's weird that the editor just goes away. I don't necessarily like that part about it. Why did it disappear? All right, so now it automatically set a parameter for it. As you can see, like the render is kind of moved, or should I say the vocal sync is kind of moved up. So it's at 20% strength right now. It also has an option for a noise filter. So you can actually filter out some of the noise. So if you click on this little button here, now you're on the noise filter part and it should try to like eliminate some of the noise if you have any kind of uh, noise in the background of the track itself. That's what this is for. Um, I'm gonna actually bring it back to the zero point and it's gonna process as every, anytime you move this, it'll actually process. So uh, just be aware of that. Anytime you're changing anything in here is gonna process. All right, so I'm gonna actually turn off this vocal sync with this little button here. I'm gonna turn off that uh, effects. And as you see, it moved a little bit. So if I hit it again, you'll see that the wave move. This wave here will actually move when I'm turning it on or off, right? So now it's on because it, it did some adjusting on its own. This is what it feels should be adjusted. So let's kind of hear it back and see. I'm gonna solo my first one and I'm gonna solo track six. One, two, one, two. One, two. Uh, yeah, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Yeah, one, two. All right, and it doesn't sound bad. I think I think it did a good job on its own, but if you wanted to, you can always manipulate this by yourself and change the strength. You can make it increase, right? And as you see, the waveform is actually moving. So if you move this around, it's gonna move the waveform around as well to try to align it to where it believes it should be. Right, so I try to put it back to about 20%. And uh, let's play it back one more time. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah. And of course, like I said, you, you can always move your stuff around um, and change it to something else. When you do start changing it though, uh, you may get some artifacts inside of the track itself. So that's why I don't highly suggest to move it too much because it's it will give it a weird artifact sound. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, uh, yeah. 
One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two. Right? So at the end there, you probably heard a little bit of an artifact in there. And this is what I'm talking about. Pick walk. We need to get this fixed, yo, because I can see a lot of people really using this on their stuff. But if it's going to give artifacts, they're not going to really go and gravitate toward it. So let's do the same for this last one down here and do the effects for it. I'm going to open up. So basically at the end of your tracks, you always have that little effects option and you're just going to open up the editor and I like to move it where I can kind of see it. It is really small. <laughs> so um, this one will also be on the same track. So it'll be track four, right? So track four is the main one for this one. And let's mute this one here. And we're going to solo this one so we can kind of hear them together. And I'm going to open up the renderer and this one looks like it set it at about 20% as well. So let's hear how this one sounds. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. And as you see, it doesn't really look like it's really aligned well. So let's see if we can move this one. As you see, all of them are actually moving to align with the rest of the track. And I have it almost at the limit there just to kind of get it close to where it should be. At least I believe it should be. So let's hear how that one sounds. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. Mm. As you see, the, it started breaking up the audio itself when you try to align it too much. So let's hear it by itself. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, mm. Yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two. All right. Cakewalk. We need to get this fixed, man. This is a really good option to actually have inside the DAW. Uh, but if, like I said, if it's going to be given artifacts, I don't really see many people using it or going to it or gravitating to it. So definitely, let's get this fixed. And once you actually get it to where you want it to be, you have this option here to render able to just bounce the clips and it should do the same thing and combine it to create the region, right? Uh, so let's hear how it sounds. Hopefully it doesn't give artifacts, but let's see. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. All right. So now it sounds like it's adding some pops and clicks in there. Now, this is something like I said, should definitely be uh addressed and get going yo because it, it is a great feature i really do believe it is and uh let me know in the comment section do you guys actually use this at all inside of your production like i said it's a great tool but if it has to work right you know this is just one of those things so let's actually kind of render out everything and we're gonna hear how it sounds I'm going to do a bounce the clip just to bounce both of them because it's going to add the effect on there. Right. So now they should be aligned to where I had them. So let's hear how it sounds all together with the track. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. One, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah, one, two. All right. And as you see, you don't really hear it once you add everything, all the elements, the beat, and the other vocals on top of it. You don't really hear those little clicks and pops and things like that. But if you're a mixing engineer and you're going through the track, you're going to hear those in there. You're going to be like, I don't know if I can use this or not. So, cakewalk, please. <laughs> For us. As, as the consumers, uh, hopefully inside of Sonar and inside of Next, this will be uh, adjusted and fixed and we'll be able to use this however we want to, really. Um, that That is the goal. 
So with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. Uh, let me know, like I said in the comments below, if you guys ever use this vocal aligning or vocal sync uh, inside a cakewalk. Like I said, it, it could be a really great tool to have. Uh, it just doesn't work the way it should. All right. So, and if you haven't already, make sure you guys are liking and subscribing to the channel. And I'll be hitting you guys with more cakewalk stuff in the future on this channel. So definitely like and subscribe. It's your boy, x.e.l.o. Till next time, people. Peace.